NASA has sent shockwaves through the rocket industry after admitting they may have developed a spacecraft that can travel faster than light and break the laws of physics. Astronomers have long stated that we need to revolutionize rocket propulsion if we ever hope to explore the universe. In today's video, let's take a closer look at this incredible new spacecraft and how it can break the laws of physics. Will this craft be able to help humanity colonize the galaxy, or will we be restricted to our own solar system. For centuries, ever since we realized that every star we can see in the night sky is a sun just like our own, with its own solar system, planets, and possibly even life. Humanity has dreamed of crossing the astronomical distances, separating us from the ultimate alien destinations. Even the nearest star is more than four light years away, while the fastest speed a human-created spacecraft has ever traveled at, reached by NASA's Juno mission, is a mere 46 miles per second. Even at that speed, it would take more than 4,000 years to reach the nearest star. But now, a breakthrough may finally allow us to expand beyond the solar system. A talented research team at NASA's Johnson Space Center sent shockwaves through the scientific community when they reached a milestone that was initially thought to be impossible by many experts. Upon formal publication, their report stated that they had experimental evidence for an electromagnetic propulsion system that could power spacecraft through a void without using any kind of propellant as fuel. The findings stated that the electromagnetic drive, or M-drive, could convert electricity into thrust by simply bouncing around microwaves in a closed cavity. Theoretically speaking, such a lightweight engine could one day be used to send a spacecraft to the surface of Mars in just 70 days. The one thing that stands in the way of this new engine and the reason why the idea is called so controversial is that the M-Drive seems to defy the laws of classical physics. As a result, even if the engine does what the team claims, scientists are still in the dark about how it works. This has caused the subject to be steeped in skepticism, with many physicists referring to the idea of an M-Drive as the realm of pseudoscience. What makes this development particularly exciting, though, is the latest study has passed a level of scrutiny by independent scientists, and their findings state that the M-Drive does work. However, nothing concrete has come forward yet, as there is still a long way to go before the theory can be properly tested and scientists can definitively conclude how the entire system functions. The idea of an M-Drive was first proposed some 25 years ago by British scientist Roger Shawyer. His version of the engine was developed and tested by engineers at NASA's Advanced Propulsion Physics Research Laboratory, also known as Eagle Works. The drive generated thrust by bouncing around electromagnetic magnetic energy, such as microwave photons, in a cone-shaped closed chamber. As the photons collide with the walls of the chamber, they seem to somehow propel the device forward, even though there is nothing released from the chamber itself. In contrast, the ion drives, which are now used on some NASA spacecraft, create thrust by ionizing propellant, which often comes in the form of xenon gas and shooting out beams of charged atoms. This means if the M-Drive stands the test of further scrutiny, it could be used in the future to send vehicles into the depths of space without burdening them with the extra load of carrying tons of propellant. After all, staying light is extremely important for faster and more cost-effective trips over long distances. Back in 1687, the foundation of classical mechanics was formed by Sir Isaac Newton when he published his Three Laws of Motion. Over the next few centuries, those laws have been constantly tested and verified time and time again. The trouble with the M-Drive originates from the fact that it violates Newton's third law of motion. The law states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. This is the principle that explains why an object like a canoe glides forward when someone paddles. The force which is applied as the paddle moves through the water causes the canoe to propel in the opposite direction. It is also how jet engines generate thrust, as when hot gases are expelled through the rear, a plane can move forward. Strangely, the M-Drive doesn't seem to expel anything at all. This is something that doesn't make any sense in light of Newton's third law or in the conversation of momentum. If an M-Drive moves forward without expelling anything from the rear, there is a clear lack of an opposing force that would explain the thrust. This proposition is similar to arguing that a person inside a car could cause it to propel forward by repeatedly hitting the steering wheel. Another example would be that of a crew of a spaceship being able to fly the craft simply by pushing on the walls. 
The theory was first tested in 2014, when a team from EagleWorks announced their early test results, which suggested that the EM engine worked. Since that initial discovery, the group has regularly tested the M drive at more stringent conditions in an attempt to further confirm the theory. Other groups have also followed with the development and testing of various incarnations of the engine. In addition to the experiments performed by the US, European and Chinese academics, there is also a community of independent individuals who regularly make and test their impossible physics engines. However, no one so far has been able to conclude that a drive has worked as intended. Since the team at NASA that has extensively studied the engine has published the result of their experiments in a journal to be reviewed by their peers, it could move us one step closer to this theory becoming a reality. While a peer review doesn't always guarantee that a finding is indeed valid, it does indicate that at least a few qualified individuals studied the subject matter and gave it their approval. The published paper describes that when the team tested the M-Drive in a near vacuum, similar to the conditions found in space, it was found that the engine was capable of producing an estimated 1.2 millinewtons per kilowatt of energy. While that amount of thrust is insignificant compared to more traditional engines, it is still incredibly impressive considering it takes no fuel at all. One of the major drawbacks of the M-Drive is that it warms up upon activation, but some scientists suggest that this can be used to heat the surrounding air and generate even more thrust. It is still unclear how the M-Drive will be able to generate thrust, but there are already certain ideas being thrown around to explain how the engine might work. The EagleWorks team that tested the drive thinks that the microwave photons push against the rolling sea of particles that flit in and out of existence at a quantum level. The only problem with this idea is that while quantum vacuums do exist, there is no evidence that they generate any plasma that is available for pushing against. Another popular idea states that the M-Drive is evidence of a new theory of an inertia that involves something called unruh radiation. This is a sort of heat experienced by accelerating objects. The idea is that since the narrow and wide ends of the M-Drive's cone permit different wavelengths of unruh radiation, the inertia of the photons inside the cavity must change as they bounce around and produce thrust to conserve momentum. However, this model assumes that unruh radiation is real, something that hasn't been experimentally confirmed. It also suggests that the speed of light varies within the M-Drive's cavity, a statement that violates Einstein's theory of special relativity. The Mach effect theory proposed in 1990 could also explain the thrust produced by an M-Drive. This is when some of the energy generated as a body accelerates is stored within the body itself. In simple terms, it suggests that there are also gravitational interactions and mass fluctuations involved in the process. It also explains how the craft can move through space without violating the conservation of momentum. NASA is not the only organization looking for ways to travel faster in space. Elon Musk is taking science fiction a step closer to reality. His company, SpaceX, says it has created a thruster system that defies physics and has successfully tested it. The rocket propulsion system uses electrically charged gas and can achieve speeds up to 65 kilometers per second, or about 135,000 miles per hour. The engine is made from super lightweight carbon fiber fuel tanks with cold gas thrusters. It doesn't use any type of propellant, meaning it does not expel any byproducts into space. Instead, the engine produces thrust by accelerating superheated plasma with magnetic fields, which also means no fumes are being expelled from combustion. These types of engines are known as electric thrusters, but they work very differently from those used in SpaceX's Falcon 9 rockets. These thrusters create thrust by propelling pressurized gas, whereas electric ones produce a charged plasma that emits ions to push a craft forward. The electric engine developed by SpaceX is reportedly more powerful than conventional gridded ion thrusters and could power manned missions to Mars and beyond. It could also cut down on travel time for spacebound cargo because it requires less propellant, which can be expensive to launch into orbit. The technology is still being tested and further development is needed before it will be ready for spaceflight. It has been submitted for peer review and NASA experts think it has potential, at least on paper. Some say it's impossible to travel at high speeds through space, but that hasn't stopped Elon Musk from claiming he can do it. His idea is to create a light speed engine that will take us to Mars in just 70 days. Such an engine defies physics and would mean traveling faster than 186,000 miles per second. There are a few ways that we could travel at light speed, but first, we need to understand how light works. As it travels through space, 
every atom in its path interacts with it. This slows it down and even stops it completely if there's no matter around to pass through. Because of these interactions, light has a maximum velocity of 186,000 miles per second, meaning that's as fast as it can go through space. Since nothing can travel faster than light without breaking the rules of physics, if we want to catch up with a distant star in our lifetime, we have to find another way to get there besides traveling directly toward it. The current way that we measure speed is the distance over time. To travel at light speed, or 186,000 miles per second, you would need to accelerate past that velocity until your speed was 186,000 mps, then hold it there for an infinite amount of time. This velocity is referred to as c and was defined by Albert Einstein in his theory of special relativity. We haven't yet reached what most consider to be light speed, although many experiments and theories suggest that we may one day be able to approach it or even surpass it within our lifetimes. Until very recently, it has been generally accepted that nothing in our current state of technology could even begin to move at a velocity close to what we consider light speed. Some estimates place us thousands or even tens of thousands of years away from ever reaching it. That being said, we are often surprised by what science and technology can accomplish, and scientists have now managed to make an engine capable of reaching a mere 10% of light speed, defying these previously held assumptions about what is possible for our technological capabilities in today's day and age. The invention of an engine that could reach such high speeds would allow us to travel through space much more efficiently than before. If you like this video, you may also enjoy this one, which talks about NASA's warning of a huge object in space that is sending radio messages toward the Earth. Do you think humanity will one day become a multi-planetary species? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below.